my name's Ian, I'm a network architect for Sky. Uh, been involved with IPv6 as a project at Sky and from the beginning, and there are quite a few people in the room here also from Sky, so any questions, you can attack anybody. So, Sky started about 10 years ago in broadband. We're not one of these mid-90s guys with loads of IP, and it's generally been pretty organic growth, and we're now the second uh, largest broadband provider in the UK, and traffic has pretty much followed it. So what have we done on V6? I'm not covering business case because we've talked about that in other forums before. Lots of boring project stuff that engineers don't really like, but it's a big project. Normally we do uh, six or 12 month deliver something, start next project cycle. This is one of the rare ones where we really start off with something that's gonna deliver in three years. Uh, this is quite rare in Sky because we tend to make a project out of getting a new pencil out of the stationary cupboard. Uh, but we've done all these things. It's gone from the technical stuff, how to do the uh, scaling, make sure it's clean, support processes, uh, and making sure it goes through the whole organisation. So this started with you know, tens of people and then became hundreds and has now covered thousands of people with training. So it's a non-trivial effort. What have we built? A really boring uh, broadband access thing. We just dual stacked it in a really normal mainstream way. We don't like having to invent new things. So it's dual stack. We support PPPOE and IPOE in uh, network. We don't apply uh, NA addressing on the link. Scale's much better. Slash 56 is to cu customers. Might look at 48s if that turns into a need. Uh, but all the bog standard things you would expect on a local LAN to have any uh, device connect. Uh, so it'll support all the Android, iOS, PCs, Linux, what, whatever's out there. It just works, apart from baby monitors because A, nobody's shipping, but there are ones out there that crash if they see a router announcement. So watch out for some of those horrors. Uh, the cores, very simple. It's MPLS. Uh, 6P is the only transition mechanism of any kind we're using. Uh, all the caches are enabled. We don't do automation of IP pools anymore. We do uh, put a large pool on when we commission a device, so that's a lot easier to do. URPF there, and the addressing plan makes use of the uh, extra space there. So we call it PIES. Where's Andy? Uh, so effectively, whenever you deploy a platform, you get private addressing, internal, external, and subscriber-facing addressing, and it allows you to have really simple ACLs that are short and do volumetric reduction. So on your peering and transit, transit edge, you can have really small, short ACLs that block lots of things and don't need to change very often. And you get progressively more detailed as you go closer to the platform. And then you can change that more regularly if you need to, but also not impacting any other platforms. And it's one of the big advantages of V6 compared to V4, which is just a mess. When you do it, roll out BCP38, put your anti-spoofing in on day one, then you don't have to come back to it. Do it for V4 as well. I won't say any more about that because Andre's up later. So where are we now? Well, we enabled about a million subscribers last autumn, and this is the UK figures. And you can see where we started putting the first subscribers rather than staff in there, and when we actually ramped up to do uh, that million, which took about a month. And this shows up in the APNIC graphs as well. They measure it slightly differently, and there's a bit more noise in there. But you can see the same ramp that happens in that space. And this is Facebook's view of the traffic, similar looking graph. 
And interestingly, uh, APNIC, George has lots of interesting data about mobile device types. Uh, and fundamentally, they all seem to work much the same. There's not a massive difference in uh, how much V6 availability you get on iOS, on Android, from non-mobile. And you can see when uh, iOS 9 rolled out with that yellow graph. So using other things from APNIC, uh, they do population-adjusted rankings, which show us up in, I don't know, 12th place or whatever. Uh, so when, by the time we finish, we fully expect to be in the top 10 of that for a useful amount of time. Bizarrely enough, it says that 1.5% of the internet that has V6 is this initial rollout. So there's still time for everybody to make an impact on these numbers. It'll look different in a few years' time. You can get batch as well. <laughs> right, so what's next? So we've got stuff we're doing this quarter up till March. A few additional features have been rolled out into uh, Assurance and OSS platforms. Uh, some additional abuse features that we could have uh, gone the whole hog without, but lessons learned and time available. We'd rather have them all there. We, we're adding more recursive DNS capacity because the additional Quad A queries seem to surprise some of our platform owners a little. Uh, and we've got some, a few pieces of firmware to roll out, and that will finish out this quarter. And then key two, default on for new customer provides and bulk enablement of the rest. So effectively, by July, we expect to have got more than 5 million customers enabled. More than a terabit of traffic will be delivered via V6. And about 92% of our subscriber base will have dual stack available. Why only 92? We've got some older CPU which don't have enough flash, what have you, but we expect hardware failures to churn to improve that. Again, I call them technology problems, some of our off-net uh, platforms and some older FTTC platforms that are going away on the same time scale. And then there's non-Sky CPE. We don't officially support that in our T's and C's, but we have proven that it can be made to work. About the only thing there is quite a few uh, CPU vendors that do support V6 have a very fixed idea of what that means. They assume it must involve a IA and NA. Doing prefix delegation only seems to confuse them. Uh, doing WAN local, uh, link local WAN only seems to confuse the people, despite it being quite a common thing to do. But OpenWRT and all those things can be made to do it really easily. And that's it. Keep it quick, ready for lunch. Uh, Hello, Ian. Um, on, just Hello, Neil. One, one quick question. On the slash 56, are you allocating that to the whole, um, are you allocating that uh, kind of provision time to the, to the customer completely, or are you, are you subnetting it? Uh, basically, we are uh, giving a 56 down to the CPE. The CPE will deploy a 64 yeah, to okay. the LAN uh, and we'll keep a slash 128 to use as its loopback is yeah, the okay, way we're doing it. But you could use uh, the slash 64 LAN. Uh, we will, but don't currently, uh, do onward prefix delegation within the home LAN. Uh, we decided that the state of the standards and what was being requested, especially with the internet of rubbish and things like that, that it wasn't quite stable enough to get the code in. Yeah, uh, which is great, because that's, I think, what, it's what we're doing at BT, and I'm pretty sure it's what the Virgin guys are doing as well. Yes, uh, Paul has uh, said much the same. There was a question from the IRC room, which is, are Sky going to be offering static IPv6? Not at this moment. Uh, that will be decided by our product team. and. Uh, if there is demand enough to make them uh, pay for the development effort, we will do it. But initially, it's dynamic, although it's relatively sticky. OK, Ray. Yeah, hi, Ray Bellis, ISC, uh, but with my co-chair of the IETF Home Networking Group hat on at this point. Uh, not a question for him, but a follow-up to what Neil was just saying. 
Uh, if you're planning to give IPv6 to your end users, please do give out at least a slash 56. Uh, as RFC 6177 is the recommendation for this one. Um, please do not assume that if you're giving yourself uh, just each end user a slash 64, that's enough. Yeah. The home networking group are all about trying to actually build out support for uh, multi tier um, subnetted networks within the home. And a slash 56 is, is essential for that, and it's in all of our RFCs on that as well. Thank you. Yeah, there are uh, at least a number of people who are saying that 56 is too small and is constraining our future. Uh, I'm not sure what the overall view on that is as yet. Okay. Right, thank you very much. <laughs>